Okay, so today we're going to take a look at some of the properties for angles in a circle. So some terms you're going to hear today is central and inscribed angle. So the central angle, this is an angle that contains the center, the center of a circle. Um, the other sides have to touch the edge of the circle. So the angle is on the circle, but it also includes the center. So this would be what we call a central angle. Okay. So central angle, um, inscribed angle, uh, it's very similar. It has to touch the sides of the circle, but this time uh, the inscribed angle, um, all three points that make the angle, They're on the uh, circle, so they're on the diameter. So the uh, inscribed angle here is this one. One, two, three. Okay. So um, those are you'll hear those words today when we talk about them, but uh, I don't think we need to dwell on those. So let's take a look at uh, what the properties we're going to work with today. So this one's a little tougher to find it. Um, it's easy to see it after someone tells you. Um, I call this one the Star Trek uh, relationship. So uh, now, I honestly, I think I've probably watched a total of half an hour of Star Trek in my life. But I know enough that this is their symbol for the Trekkies. And uh, this is the symbol I remember for what it looks like when um, you have one of these. So for example. Here's a classic Star Trek angle. Okay, so it's kind of like the symbol they wear on their shirts. So that's kind of how I remember this relationship. Now, if something works better for you, I'd love to hear it, but for now, this is what I, I do. So it says, um, if we were to take a look at these, hmm, let's see if we can figure out, can we figure out some of these angles? Maybe we can figure out what the relationship is for this red figure here. Can anybody figure out some of these missing angles? If you know a number that goes in the angle, Andy? How did you know the top is 60? This part here? The whole thing? How did you know that? So this line here? Okay. So, oh, I see. So you've, you've gone and skipped ahead. So Andy has done like three steps in his head. I didn't, I didn't go that fast. Um, I see one isosceles triangle here. So if it's 45, it's 45 here. If it's 15 and 15 here, it must be 15 there. So that's what Andy was saying. The 60 degrees is the whole thing. That is correct. Okay. Um, we can also get the rest of the angles in here. If this is 45 and 45, there's got to be 90 left over. There's 30 been used of the 180. That means there's 150 that's been uh, left over. So the only angle that's missing in my uh, problem is here. So how far is it to go all the way around? Well, 360, I've got 150 and 90, so that's 240. So that means there's 120 left over. Okay, so what I want you to think about is I want you to think about just the Star Trek part of this problem. So here's the Star Trek part and how you might be able to find a connection between uh, the angles in that figure. There's going to be two angles that have a relationship. The rest of them, it's not going to, they're just sort of distractors there. Yes? Yes, so this is the central angle here. And the inscribed angle is up here. Anybody find a connection between them? Oh, in this case they do. Yes, they add up to 180. That may not always be the case. Yeah, it's half. So this one is 60. The whole thing here is 60 degrees. And this one is 120. So that's, that's part of the thing we're going to look for. We'll, we'll verify it again with another example. So in this one here, it's hard to see which one is the central angle and which one, or sorry, it's hard to see the Star Trek figure because 
what used to be a Star Trek figure, maybe a nice one like that, they've moved it over to here. So it's been distorted. But the same relationship will hold. Just a second, Andy, and I'll get your question. What we want to find out is, if this is the central angle, just see for a second. I want you to look at the picture. Can you find the inscribed angle? So just take a look at the picture. If this is the central, think about which one's the inscribed. So the inscribed angle should be that one up there then. Okay. So this is the one. It has the same points right there. They share the same points. This is the center. This is the inscribed from those same points. Okay. So let's just see if it still shares that, uh, that relationship. Um, if this is 40, this is an isosceles triangle. So this one here should be 40. 40, 40 is 80. There should be 110 degrees here. Again, isosceles, this should be 70. That means 70, 70 is 140. So there's 40 left over. 150, that means I need 210. Um, yeah, it should be 100 now. Oh, it should be 100. My triangle has 190 degrees then, so, sorry. No, it's recording. See the red flashing down there? Thank you, though. That would have been devastating. We would, we would have had to start the lesson all over. Okay, so, um, so that means devastating for you, not me. Isn't there what? Yeah, it's just that it's recording the entire part now, I believe. So, anyways, we'll double check it when we get to the, the time here, but... Um, sorry, so I'm at 140, so I believe there should be 220 here then. As long as I haven't added anything up, else up wrong there. So this was 110, 220. So uh, 110 for the in inscribed angle and 220 for the central. Okay, so we can just use this property now to help us solve some problems that we've, we've run into. So for example, um, this is the figure that you're looking for. Um, for any chord that passes through the center of the circle, um, that means the central um, is equal to twice the inscribed, or the inscribed is half the central. Okay. Now, in this case, we're looking at a special thing here. It says for a chord that passes through the center. So a chord that passes through the center, there's my chord that passes through the center. What's the central angle this time? Yeah, it's 180 this time, which means that that angle up here has to be 90 degrees. So I have to make a right triangle when I do that. Okay? So if I make a semicircle with one of my chords by, by cutting it in half, that means the piece up here must be a right triangle, making it 90 degrees. So if we do that in this case, we can use that type of information to say, if this was 90 degrees, then I have Pythagoras relationship between the three sides of that triangle. So uh, between 29, 21, and the missing side, so 29 squared <coughs> minus 21 squared is equal to x squared. So I end up with... Uh, x equals to 20. Okay. So that's another property that you have to think about if you're looking for some missing sides. It's a special triangle that we like to work with if you run across 90 degrees. Okay. Um, let's just, we'll pause here and then we'll pick up.